My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to America. I'll be one of my friends, just trying to make a little money over here. My job, not just to entertain, but to educate, to teach you. Call me 1-800-743-CBC. Tweet me at Jim Kramer. If the federal government is giving money away, I think you should take it. Say Uncle Sam decided to give a lot of money away, yet very few people took advantage of the opportunity. Well, you couldn't tell from the averages. Dow gaining 127 points, has to be advancing 0.48%. NASDAQ climbing 0.75% to a new all-time record. But today, the market was consumed by smaller investors buying shares in lousy meme stocks like GameStop and AMC. They're betting that, like in January 2021, the short sellers won't be able to take the pain. The house of pain. And when that happens, the shorts need to go buy in stock. Buy, 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 Creating what's known as a short squeeze to propel stocks to ever dizzying heights, even much higher than we saw today. Now, we don't know when that ends, but it does end eventually, and it doesn't end well. It sure ended the last time we did this in 2021, leaving many people holding a deflated bag. And more on that later. For now, though, I want to talk about the big opportunity nobody seemed to care about. Washington's giving money away. Where? In a fact sheet that hit my desk from the White House titled, quote, President Biden takes action to protect American workers and businesses from China's unfair trading practices. Wow, here it comes. The gist. The president believes that the Chinese are, I'm going to quote again, flooding global markets with artificially low price exports, end quote. So Biden's using his power to slap tariffs on $18 billion in exports from China. That's meaningful. Normally, once that kind of news gets published, any stock that could conceivably benefit would soar. But you see, today's inve- today investors were so drawn to illusory short-busting opportunities that they overlook these very real tariff opportunities. There are now a host of industries that are about to be protected by bigger tariffs on Chinese exports, and it will help their sales and earnings for years. Now, some of them like steel don't really matter because our government's already done a real good job shutting down the Chinese steel. But there are others where these tariffs boosts are a very big deal. Let's start with the biggest single winner that nobody cared about, Owens and Miner. Now, the government's slapping 25% tariffs on Chinese face masks and surgical gloves. Previously, the tariff was 0 to 7.5% for this PPE. Owens and Miner is the dominant American player in the space, so it can probably take some share here. Now, the stock is well of its highs after a poorly received quarter, and it seems very viable and no one cared. Next beneficiary, makers of syringes and needles. China's being hit with a 50% tariff on these medical supplies, up from zero. Like masks and gloves, Chinese producers have really come after these components. Who wins from this? I happen to like Beckton Dickinson, a terrific medical device company that we spent some time with when we were out at J.P. Morgan Healthcare Conference in San Francisco this year. Beckton Dickinson's got a significant organic growth, superior operating cash flow, recently raised guidance. The stock was actually down a couple of bucks today. Sure, you can say needles aren't a big business for them, that they make much more highly valued devices. That's true. But more customers will be driven to the company, and I think they'll see less Chinese syringe competition, especially when it comes to any new injectables like the GOP Dash 1 weight loss drugs. Either way, it is a win for a very undervalued stock. How about solar cells? The government raised tariffs on Chinese solar cells from 25 to 50 percent, and the market reacted totally wrong. That's right. The worst solar stocks, the money-losing home solar plays that depend on those cheap Chinese panels, all rally because they also have a huge short position. The memesters bought anything with an outsized large short position. The mischief-making memesters, they strike again. But there's a real solar company, a made-in-the-USA solar company, First Solar, that's the clear winner. In this crazy market, the stock actually fell to and a half bucks. At these levels, first solar sells for about nine times next year's earnings estimates with tremendous growth rate. And this is before we factor in the impact of the tariffs on some of their major competitors. Now, I think it's an out-and-out winner part of, a, a part of the a world where solar might be the dominant power solution by 2030. Stay with us a year from next tracker where I get that number. Now, while this next one's more diffuse, our government's doubling the tariff on legacy semiconductors from 25% to 50%. Legacy can be a slippery term. When COVID raged, we knew that our country couldn't produce enough of the older, larger form factor chips, not the state-of-the-art NVIDIA kind of chips, making us hostage to foreign suppliers, and then those supply chains got busted. So this is part of a larger strategy to bring semiconductor manufacturing back home. Now, here's one where the market actually got it right. 
as Texas Instruments, the biggest legacy chip maker, saw its stock jump three bucks to a new 52 week high today. Too late to buy? I think so. Same with microchip technology, another legacy chip market. And analog devices, one I really like to hit a 52 week high. Because legacy is a slippery term. There's some edge cases, though. I, 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 you know, might be on semi. And that's a potential winner. They made hard to get auto chips during the pandemic. Might be worth betting on now that the stock's gotten so low. The biggest winners, though, will be the American automakers. There's a widespread belief that our car companies are going to be roadkill once China's auto industry gets here. We got that from who? None other than the automakers themselves, especially Ford's executive chairman, Bill Ford. He's been the most adamant about the existential threat of government-subsidized competition from the PRC. On CNN, Bill, Bill Ford said about 11 months ago, the Chinese, and I quote, developed very quickly and they developed them in large scale and now they're exporting them, end quote. He went on to say, quote, they're not here, but they'll come here. We think at some point we need to be ready and we are getting ready, end quote. Hey, with 100% tariff on Chinese orders, Ford doesn't need to be all that ready. It can focus on other things that actually make money. Now, Biden didn't outright ban Chinese vehicles, but he basically doubled their price. And if Ford can't beat that, well, they might as just well throw in the towel. If we get a firm commitment from the government, it will, it will stop the import of any Chinese car made in Mexico, or at least slap the same 100% tariff on that. Well, that would be a go a long way to closing the back door from China to here. Not only does this tariff protect American car companies from cheap Chinese electric vehicles, it also means that the regular vehicles, the regular cars and trucks and hybrids will benefit, too. I like this policy, but even if you hate it, it's a clear giveaway to Ford and GM. And you got to cash in on a giveaway when you get it. The chief reason GM and Ford stocks sell at the bottom of the S&P 500 barrel is because of this existential Chinese threat. Whenever China's been able to allow to dump merchandise, they've destroyed pricing and destroyed companies. That won't happen here now. Not with these tariffs. I've been a broken record on Ford. I'm particularly aware of that. And we own it for the Chapel Trust. It's got a 4.83% yield, for heaven's sake. If Ford can just curtail the immense losses in electric vehicles, I mean, some people think they're like more than 150000 per car. Well, then it's much easier with the new tariffs. And the stock can and will go higher, even though it seems to be, as I told my partner David Faber, epoxy to 12 and I can't help that Home Depot had not that great a quarter. Why do I believe these ideas can work? Because this market cannot walk and chew gum at the same time. Today, it had short busting on its mind. It can't handle another thought, like the winners from the new tariff schedules I just gave you. Hey, maybe by tomorrow, people will realize that first solar is the winner and the little solar is the losers. Maybe they'll realize that Owens and Miner makes personal protective equipment or Beckton Dickinson will boost its margins and syringes immediately. Bottom line. That's how I like to pick stocks. But you can just decide that if it doesn't have a big short position, it's not worth your time. If that's the case, though, you know what? You be better. You better hope that Hello Kitty comes roaring back with a litter box with some fresh step dumped in it. Hmm, that works. Donna in New Jersey. Donna. Hello, Jim. It's Donna, Donna from New Jersey. I thought so. What's up? <laughs> Hey, Jim, Adobe yeah. dropped in February, and it hasn't been over 520 since March. No. Although targets are over 600, Adobe yeah. looks dead in the water. Now, earnings are due June 13. Jim, what do I do? Sell now or hold No, no, Adobe? no, no. It's really the cheapest I've seen. And a lot of this has been down 20% of the year. A lot of this is because of the belief that they weren't able to buy this Canva and that they have a too expensive a sweet offering, and they have to cut the price of the sweet offering. Uh, you know, Shantanu and Ryan is going to figure this one out. Now, I don't know how he's going to figure it out. I don't have an answer for him. But I'm betting I'm not running Adobe. And I know that he's a smart person, and therefore I'm backing with him at the level of 475, give or take like 10 or 15 points. So there I go. There, I'm saying that to Donna from New Jersey. Now let's go to Errol in Indiana. Errol. Hey, Jim. Uh, Errol. Why has the profit to earnings uh, remained so flat compared to other stocks when the stock market has been doing so well? Well, of which stock? LNG. Oh, you know, I think LNG. Look, OK, so this is a very complicated business right now. Um, LNG is we're trying to figure out uh, whether they'll be able to uh, build more more plants. Uh, we do know that the, the president said, you know, we're going to put a pause to 2028. It's wrecked the whole industry. It's as if people, the president somehow felt that it wouldn't matter. And the president was just dead wrong. Now, I, look, hey, they're like natural gas. It doesn't matter. He destroyed the growth industry. And I think it was short-sighted because why? Because I like the fact that our allies were depending on our natural gas. We should have helped them instead of doing something that I think is going to ultimately help the Russians. All right. 
This market cannot walk and chew gum at the same time. Today, it's short busting on its mind, not making money. Maybe we'll get back to real business tomorrow. On Man Money tonight, Stanley Buck and Decker got hit after earnings, and with the stock returning to pre-report levels, I sit down with the CEO, fresh off the company, ringing the opening bell. Then next track reported earnings after the bell, and I'm running through the numbers with the CEO. And CBC is out with their disruptor 50 list today, highlighting some of the don't you love that? Highlighting some of the innovative private companies that are changing the world. So I'm talking with number 22 Chime. <laughs> to see how the digital-only financial provider is shaking up the space. I suggest you stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on X. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Mentions. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.